now we're gonna see the rams as you can see so the rams also or the random access memory can cause failure or a not working laptop so as you can see here we have the ram the random access memory as you can see for this laptop you can open it or remove it just by pulling the two sides terminals here we have as you can see the ram okay connections as you can see the ram connections so if you have a problem with the ram or with the graphic you can just clean the rams and the ram slots because sometimes when you have some dirt in the ram slots this can cause the problem in the laptop so you can just clean the ram chips and also the ram slots so as i told to you the ram or random access memory is also one of the most common faults in laptops okay that's why you should always check it and clean it and of course depending on the type of the laptop there is many types of the ram for example for this kind of laptop this is a ddr2 as you can see we have here 1.8 volt so 1.8 volt is the working voltage for ddr2 ram okay and there is many types of ram for example ddr3 the working voltage is 1.5 volt ddr1 the working voltage is 2.5 volt for ddr4 the working voltage is 1.2 volt ddr5 this is a very improved ram the working voltage is 1.1 volt and so on so do you see 1.8 volt means the working voltage for do ddr2 you can just know the type of the ram by knowing the voltage that is marked in the slot of the ram this is another motherboard with the same ram here we have as you can see its capacity 512 megabytes as you can see okay the capacity of the ram So there is of course many capacitors for the RAMs. So let's see this for example, the capacity for this random access memory. As you can see here, we have one gigabyte. Okay, one gigabyte. This is Samsung. Samsung is the model. Okay. So this is one gigabyte. Of course, there is two gigabyte, four gigabyte, etc. Okay. So let's check here we have another motherboard. So this motherboard is for DDR3 RAM. This is an improved motherboard. A modern motherboard here as you can see this part here is next to the middle of the slot means this is DDR3. This but for this now as you can see this there is a big difference between DDR3 RAM and ddr2 rams as you can see the working voltage is 1.5 volts okay for ddr2 1.8 volt but for ddr3 1.5 volts okay as you can see in the slot 1.5 volts So as I told to you before, there is many types of random access memory. And for every type of RAM, there is a working voltage, a specific working voltage. Okay, so let's see this motherboard also. Let's see the type of this RAM. So as you can see here, it seems that this is the DDR2, of course, we have 1.8 volt. So this is DDR2 RAM. Okay, as you can see, this is two RAM chip. You can just pull this bars or arms 
and uh, RAM will be removed easily. Just pull the arms and the RAM will be removed. Okay. So as I told to you before, the RAM chips can be the cause of no power laptop. You should always check the RAMs before going ahead and checking other tanks. For this RAM, as you can see, we have five 112 megabyte DDR2 as you can see okay for the other chip one gigabyte okay so here as you can see this is an old motherboard as you can see where we have an old RAM we have here 2.5 volt this slot is for DDR1 RAM okay for DDR1 RAM this is an old motherboard and this is a modern motherboard as you can see here the graphic card and the GMCH is integrated with the processor in one chip okay so here the RAM is DDR3 okay DDR3 with powering voltage of 1.5 volts okay so you will find usually the modern motherboards so of course this is i7 motherboard okay this motherboard is for i7 laptop You'll find the modern laptops, you will find the graphic card or the GMCH is integrated with the processor in just one chip. Okay. But for the old motherboards, you will find all chips are separated. For example, you will find the processor, the GMCH, the graphic card are separated and of course in some motherboards some improved and modern motherboards you will find that the processor the gmch the graphic card and the ich are integrated in just one chip the graphic card so as you can see here in this laptop the graphic card is integrated with the processor as you can see okay here we have the ich okay this small this small ic and this is the graphic card with the cpu so for this laptop the cpu the graphic card and the not bridge are integrated in just one chip as you can see the cpu okay but in some other motherboards as you can see for example for this motherboard the as you can see we have here the cpu the north bridge with the graphic card as you can see and the ich okay so here this is the north bridge with the graphic card so for this laptop the graphic card and the north bridge is separated from the cpu okay so we're going to see another laptop as you can see for this laptop we have here as you can see the CPU and the North Bridge is integrated in one chip. Okay. And here we have the graphic card. This is the graphic card. Okay. And here, as you can see, the ICH. Okay. So let's see another motherboard where we have all chips are separated from each other. So as you can see, this is the CPU the north bridge okay here we have the graphic card nvidia graphic card and over here we have the ich so all chips are separated from each other so this is for the old motherboard but for the newer motherboard or like this motherboard for example the three chips are integrated in one chip so the processor, the North Bridge, and the graphic card. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to repair the graphic card problem. Sometimes you can get a laptop with no data or no nothing in the screen. So the graphic card is one of the common faults that, that can cause this problem. The RAM, the random access memory, or the graphic card. If you have no data, you should and you check the random access memory and the problem still persists, you should apply 
a hot air or a heat to do graphic card as you can see okay you should use the hot air gun and then apply a little bit of the heat over the graphic card body okay so this technique can correct the soldering and the graphic card and of course you should use a soldering paste this is a soldering paste as you can see the characteristics of the soldering paste as you can see we have join high intensity good immersion neutral as you can see no poison no origin good insulation okay this is a good insulation this is one of the most important characteristics okay no deterioration or no dry so the soldering paste make tank easier you should always use it above the graphic cards and then apply the heat using the hot air gun over the body of the graphic card and this will correct the problem of the dry solder and the graphic card i will show you right now the solder and the graphic card it looks like this as you can see so this is an empty place for a chip as you can see this is the solder when there is a dry or a problem in this solder point this can make a disconnection between the graphic card and the motherboard that's why you should apply the heat okay 